Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a new intriguing paper with a very interesting title, Avoiding the Great Filter, a projected time frame for human expansion of world, a paper that creates a model exploring a very simple but very intriguing concept, the concept known as the Great Filter that tries to answer the Fermi paradox. Where is everybody? Why is it that after decades of observing and listening to the universe, we still have not heard a single convincing signal indicating that it's extraterrestrial intelligence? Not a single sign or observation definitively telling us that aliens are living somewhere out there on another planet. And one of the resolutions of the Fermi Paradox is known as the Great Filter. The concept originally proposed in 1996 by this wonderful person, an economist who essentially discussed this idea, suggesting that we most likely have already passed this so-called filter. The article that's also available in the description below that you can find right here. With the main idea behind the great filter being our misunderstanding of how life, complex life, intelligent life, evolves on various planets or across the universe. Hansen suggests that there is some sort of a filter, a great filter, that prevents any life in the universe from reaching a certain stage that we expect mathematically. And so in this particular case, he suggests that there might be a filter that we already kind of crossed, that many other civilizations crossed as well, that unfortunately leads to the complete destruction of the entire civilization. The filter itself could be absolutely anything and possibly present during any of the steps of the evolution of life. He lists some of the steps right here, but the actual filter could be in any of these steps, or even any other steps that are not listed. So in other words, Hansen himself does not know what exactly it is, but the fact that we're not hearing or seeing a lot of civilizations traveling the galaxy, to him, suggests that the filter does exist and something stops these civilizations from developing to that point. But this is of course just one of the potential answers for the so-called Fermi Paradox. But in this paper they go in a slightly different direction. First of all, they do make an assumption that although we haven't reached the great filter just yet, we have reached what's known as the window of peril. We've reached a stage when we have a capacity to completely destroy ourselves. Something that began right after the World War II with the development of the nuclear weapons. And within only a few decades, this window has increased in size. More and more things start happening, increasing the chance for a complete self-destruction. And in this case, it doesn't actually matter what it is, it's just the chances have increased. Simply because we now have so many more ways of destroying the entire world. Nuclear weapons, some sort of biological warfare, or anything else related to the climate change on the planet. But the scientists in the paper propose the solution to avoiding the Great Filter. The solution that's been talked about before by a lot of different individuals. Turning our species into an interplanetary and interstellar species. If we do manage to find a way to travel across star systems, it will automatically make Great Filter a non-issue and it will definitely prevent our species from being completely destroyed. And so in this paper they actually create a model that tries to predict the potential dates for various robotic missions and for various human missions to all sorts of planets and stars out there. And they use a very interesting proposition to do this. A concept that's somewhat related to Moore's Law. The law that suggested that the number of transistors on microchips doubles every two years, as you can kind of see from this graph right here. And here the idea is pretty simple. Deep space missions are almost directly related to the complexity of computers and a lot of robotic systems. As this complexity increases over time, more and more complex missions are going to start becoming possible, with space missions becoming more and more complex as the time goes on and as we develop new technology. And assuming that we can survive long enough to become interplanetary and interstellar, at this point, the Great Filter is no longer a problem, at least according to the scientists in this paper. But their model also creates actual dates for various potential missions. Missions to Jupiter, missions to Saturn, and missions to some of the nearby stars. The first prediction here is in regards to Mars. They predict the first manned missions in 2030s. But this is of course not news to us because Elon Musk has already been talking about this, as were some of the scientists from China as well. And so a mission to Mars in 2030 is obviously expected. But by 2060s, their model predicts that we're also going to reach the asteroid belt, possibly an object like Ceres or Vesta. And since we've already reached these objects with the robotic missions, it only makes sense that this would be the next step. 10 years after, in 2070s, their model predicts the landing of humans on one of the moons of Jupiter. Probably not Io, very likely Ganymede or Europa. 
But 10 years after that, in 2080s, we're probably going to end up somewhere around Saturn. And in this case, it's probably going to be Titan. A manned mission to Titan by 2080s does sound pretty exciting. But being a mathematical model, things here do escalate pretty quickly. Simply because this is a logarithmic function. And also because of the tremendous distances to various stars out there. So for example, to reach the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, for some sort of a robotic probe is not going to take too long. It might actually be ready in a few years from now. But a manned mission is a completely different story. The first human being to arrive to Proxima Centauri is not going to leave Earth until 2250, according to their model. So roughly in around 230 years from now. Now slightly farther away we have this really exciting system known as Tau Ceti. There's an older video somewhere right there about it. This system is farther away, so the first robotic mission might be launched in 2030s. But the human mission is not expected until 2270, so 250 years from now. And then we have the famous TRAPPIST-1 system with its seven beautiful terrestrial planets. But because this is at a distance of about 40 light years away from us, the robotic mission might launch in 2040, so in about 20 years from now. But the manned mission is not going to happen until 2300s, 280 years from now. But being a model, it also predicts some of the farther distances as well, including a mission to the center of our own galaxy, the center of the Milky Way. And although we could probably launch a robotic probe in 2050, the manned mission is not going to happen until 2400s. And this region might be super interesting to visit one day, simply because of the other paper they mentioned in their study. The paper we discussed on the channel as well, somewhere right there as well, that suggests that the most likely location for super complex civilizations is most likely to be somewhere at the center of the Milky Way galaxy because of the other mathematical model that was performed in that paper. And so reaching that region might actually help us discover a lot of different extraterrestrial civilizations, at least according to this model. But my problem with the model is that everything here seems to be a little bit simplistic. First of all, this model naively suggests that we're going to be totally fine and advancing as normal for the next 300 years. At the moment, a lot of signs sort of point to the other direction. Unfortunately, at the current rate, things are not going to be well for humanity in the next 50 years. Second of all, this model relies on the idea of Moore's Law and expects the technological advancement just as Moore's Law to continuously double every two years. But when it comes to Moore's Law, unfortunately, we know we have reached the limit, simply because of the sizes of things we're talking about here. In this case, what you're seeing is the increase in the electron density, with the electrons suddenly being able to jump from one point to another, due to the quantum tunneling effect that starts happening when the actual transistors get too small. So the Moore's Law is no longer law. The size of the transistors can no longer become any smaller. And using a similar analogy here, it's quite possible that the human space exploration might also peak at some point. Not just space exploration, any kind of development when it comes to technology. And although the science fiction movies would expect us to believe a lot of different advancements including faster than light travel, time travel, and all sorts of advanced amazing technology that could exist one day, the reality might be different. We don't really know if at some point technology is just going to peak completely. Just like the transistor development with Moore's Law. Lastly, even now, we have no idea how to travel in space over long distances. We've obviously landed on the moon, but landing in another star system is a completely different story. We would have to have some extremely advanced spaceships that are able to survive really long trips without breaking down and to somehow also preserve all of the life on those ships as well. None of this right now is even remotely possible. And so for now at least, this mathematical model is unfortunately just that. It's just a model. But the scientists in this paper do mention that this is just the first step, a first layer of a potentially much more complex model that's going to be developed over the years. And for all we know, maybe this right here is actually a huge underrepresentation. Maybe the reality is that we're only going to be making it to the stars in the next few thousands of years. But since the odds of survival of human beings here on planet Earth is currently not really looking that good either, we might want to actually put a lot of effort into this we might want to find a way to avoid the Great Filter. And that's basically what the scientists are trying to push in this particular paper. At the moment, we're stuck here on Earth. But to survive longer, we might want to start looking outside of this planet. We might have to become an interplanetary and an interstellar species. And this could be essential for the survival of the entire civilization. 
And that is definitely something I agree with, but something nobody has a solution to right now. Anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. And either way, I'll see you tomorrow, stay wonderful, and as always, bye bye.